Hello people, back again, and this time we're doing a games pickup video. Which always has a story, because somehow there's always a story involved when you go to do game pickup. Just for me. So beginning this week, out of the blue, my son goes, Can we go to the game store one day when I get off of school? Well, I'm like, well, you've only got two weeks of school left. We ain't got much homework left. Sure, we can go to the game store. I don't need a, I don't need an excuse to go to the game store, but you know what? This is a good excuse to go to the game store. Haven't been there in a while. And the last time me and my son went, where he went with me, he bought his first game with his own money. It's his game, NASCAR 2000 on the PlayStation 1. Which you can have fun with that game. But if you get in the grass, you're going to spin out immediately. And it made, you know makes the game frustrating if you accidentally go off the course of the racetrack and you spin out automatically. And that was the problem he was having with it. But he was having fun, but just, you know, that was frustrating. It was kind of like, you can have fun, but if you go off the track, you're kind of in trouble. And normally he doesn't, he usually asks, am I going? And he just wants to go with. He normally doesn't buy anything. Well, he just looks around. Now, he's looked at all the systems since he was little, because basically since he was little, I basically had every common retro system that you'll find at a retro store that most of them carry. Uh, though the stores we go to are retro and modern, I mean, they have everything, but, I mean, he knows, you know, when he goes, he knows he can look at everything. And I didn't know what he was going to look at or get, you know, normally he'll, I was like, well, he's probably going to go there and want something, like, really expensive, but it's his money, you know. We, I thought we might have to have the conversation about, you know, buying something what it's worth, not, you know, overpaying for something, understanding how much things are worth, how much things are in your area. This is the thing I see a lot of people make the mistake of is I buy things based on the value I know I can get in my area. I know, okay, I know this guy charges this $5 for this game, but I know that normally other stores only charge 3 So I can wait on that $5 game because I know somebody else is going to charge 3 kind of thing. I've seen a lot of parents at stores I go to always direct their kid to get the rare game, the really expensive game, and it's like, why would you do that? Why don't you just teach a kid to buy the game they want to buy? Because a lot of rare games aren't good. There's a reason why they're rare. Nobody wanted to actually play them when they originally came out. Or they missed them. There are exceptions. There are some good rare games. I didn't tell them what system to look at. Just went there. And I followed where he went to. And the first thing he did was go to the Wii. He wanted a Wii game. Like, okay. The first game he picked up was like, what, Monster Truck 4x4? Because he wanted a truck, kind of like a racing game. And the only idea was, well, there's also Excite Trucks they had there, which they usually, normally isn't there. And, you know, I didn't drive. I just said, you, could, you know, maybe you want both of these, you know, kind of thing. And he looked at both of them and he decided to pick up Excite Trucks. Now, Excite Trucks made by Nintendo. There's also what, Excite Bots on the Wii? And I feel bad now that I missed this game, because this is a really good, fun, arcade like truck game. It's not just about racing. Normally you get a game that's about first place to the finish line. And this game does have that, don't get me wrong. But this game is about turboing, doing as many stunts as you can before you finish the race. The longer you drift, the more stars you get. You need so many stars to beat each track. And then there's, there's a, of course, bronze, gold, bronze, silver, gold, and then platinum. My son's already beaten bronze, silver. He's got one track left to gold, to gold and then he moves on to platinum. Uh, me, my son, and my wife have had a lot of fun with this game. Uh, it's about, like, a, how much air, the longer you have, you, you're out up in the air, the, when, in a jump, the more stars you get. It's all about stars. Uh, if you hit an exclamation mark that's on the track, it'll make the track kind of terraform. And a lot of times it equals into a jump. Uh, and if you do, and sometimes there'll be rings. If you jump more of those rings, you jump through. The more stars you get, everything's about stars. Smash into another vehicle. Depending on how you smash into the other vehicle, you get more stars. Uh, and you need to have so many stars to beat the track. Now, getting first place will get you bonus stars, which will help you out in beating that track. But it's a really fun game. Had a lot of fun with it. Uh, the only thing wrong with this game, I mean, it is motion control. And there is a downside to that over a controller. But basically, sometimes, like the rocks in the game, sometimes you'll bounce off them, other times you'll crash into them. 
Um, you have to know the water, which part of the water is a track and which part's not. Because if you get into the water that's not part of the, like, the track or the path, you'll crash. So, uh, but a really fun game. Having a lot of fun with it. Um, Four dollars, can't complain. Now, while I was looking at the NES and Super Nintendo games, my son was looking over at the Sega case right next to it. And he found a game he wanted, and he asked the lady to open it, and he picked it up. And this is the second and the only other game he got. And it's World Series Baseball for the Game Gear. Now, I already own this game in the Game Gear, but this is his copy. He paid $1.99. Uh, we'll see if he likes it or not. Because if he doesn't like it, I also have World Series Baseball on the Genesis he could try. I have obviously World Series 2K Baseball, all the, all the baseball games of those on the Dreamcast he could try. But it is baseball season. Kids at school are talking about it. So he wanted to pick up a Game Gear game, which is cool. So I'll definitely let him try that out. Now, since I was there, I had a tough decision this time picking out what I was going to get. Because quite honestly... They had like nine long boxes for the PS1 games that I didn't have and really wanted to pick up. But it would, they weren't incredibly expensive, but it would have racked up uh, to a lot more than I, I wanted to spend. And especially when I went there, the intention of saying, I'm not going to spend any money. But of course I did. But I did pick up one N64 game. And partially because I not a classic gamer is back, and he was doing N64 week, and I would just, you know, watch on the N64 videos go, you know what, I I could use more N64 games, and I don't really have my, a lot of Micro Machine games, and I don't have one on the N64, and I saw this, and, and so I picked up Micro Machine 64 Turbo. Now, this is a fun little game. Uh, all Micro Machine games I've never had, a never have not been fun to me. Uh, if you like Micro Machine games, you'll like this. Granted, if you don't like the N64 controller, that'd be the only downside for you not wanting to get this game, obviously. But it is a fun little racing game. If I hadn't seen this, I really was tempted to pick up San Francisco Rush 2048 because I don't own that on the N64. But I saw this Micro Machine game, don't really own one, wanted to play it. Had fun playing all of them, so I had to pick this up. And that was my only N64 game. Now, this was a case where I went to look at the NES games because, of course, I'm trying to grow my NES collection. It's not all here because I'm organizing it right now. I'm reorganizing this and rearranging things right now. And they only had two games that I had debate on getting. The other one was Tom and Jerry on the NES. It was a perfect condition, but I never played it. And since I never played it, I had no kind of like nostalgia for it. I didn't get it. But the other game I got... I got completely because it's a Capcom game, and that is Little Nemo Dream Master. I have a funny story about this game because when this game originally came out, it was at my local video store to rent it. I saw the cover, and it just wasn't the type of game I wanted to play, so I just never rented it. And I still remember looking at the cover in this game to this day, and when I saw this, I said, you know what, I need to pick this up and finally play it. And it's a Capcom game, and... I like all the NES Capcom games, so I had to get it. Now, all the three Super Nintendo games games I got next are common games, but I don't have a lot of games in my Super Nintendo collection, and the first one, I played a lot on the Super Nintendo, and that is from Dad East, and that is none other than Side Pocket. A fun little pool game. If you ever played any pool game on the PC or any other thing, it's the typical thing. You know, you're just a pool stick. Point what direction you want to shoot the cue ball. Obviously, it shows you where the, obviously the angle where the ball is going to go, kind of thing. But a fun little pool game. Played it a lot on the Super Nintendo. Glad to have it back in the collection. Another fun game I played by Spectrum Hollow Butt is Breakthrough. Of course, made by the creator of Tetris. This is basically, in a sense, a form of Tetris, but different. Kind of like you're shooting the blocks. Uh, it's a little different. If you played it before, you know what I'm talking about. It is basically a fun twist on, in a sense, on, on Tetris. or It is a puzzle game, so basically a twist on puzzle games. But it is fun. You go to different locations, Berlin, London. A lot of fun. Glad I picked it up. And the last game is a Konami game. Because, you know what? 
You can't have another enough Konami games. Again, I love Konami back in the 8 and 16-bit era. And this is one I didn't play a lot. And it is Tiny Toon Adventures Buster Bust Loose. So I'll have to try this. See what it's like. Love Tiny Toons. Love Konami. I imagine I like this game. Seen gameplay for it. Fun little game. Glad to get it. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you is a game that... Now, I didn't... This Easter, my wife and me bought each other nothing. We said, this year we're not getting anything. It's about my son. And all my son and me have been doing, have been talking about, on Xbox 360, running and playing Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare. <clears throat> it's a fun little cartoony first-person shooter game that's geared towards kids. If you go play online... There will be a lot of kids playing the game. There are adults, but a lot of kids. And because my son talked about so much, I talked about so much, she got it for my son for Easter. And we played a lot of this game. It's a lot of fun. It's just a fun, cartoony, first-person shooter on the Frostbot 3 engine, of course, by PopCap, and, of course, released by EA. Uh, the great thing about this game, if you've never played it, and one of the, the, besides there are characters you can unlock, there are packs, which you can earn money by just playing the game. You don't have to buy. You can buy if you want to, but you can earn the money just by playing the game to unlock the packs. But there are a lot, a ton, a ton of customizable options for your character through the packs. Hundreds, if not thousands. And so the more packs you buy, the more customization you'll be able to do to your character. And you can make your character look really unique. I don't want to do, it's very rare I run into any characters that look exactly the same because so many, there's so many customizable options. And this game is a lot of fun. Now, the next part of my pickups is some fun stuff. So, in March, it was my wife and my, my anniversary. We have been married for 12 years. Got married in 2002. 12 years we've been married. Known each other since 1997, known each other for 17 years. Uh, started dating in 1998. First time we met. We actually originally met in an AO chat room chatting back in 1997. And so this time around, I wanted to get something that had some, some memory behind us when we first were together. And that actually was video games when we first got together, to be honest. The PlayStation 1 was out. Uh, the first game she ever bought me was Wild Arms. Well, ironically enough, later she ended up taking over that game because she got further ahead of me, but nevertheless. And so the first thing I want to do is get something related to PlayStation 1. Now, the first game my wife bought herself for PlayStation 1 after Christmas because she didn't get one. And the first game, two games she had on it, uh, it came with Treasure of the Deep. And the first game she actually bought herself for it was Crash Bandicoot. And the other one she had bought was Beyond the Beyond. An average RPG, or below average, depending on how you feel about it. By Camelot. So I, I couldn't find Beyond the Beyond. And uh, for some reason, nobody had Crash Bandicoot at the time. I got the next best thing. And that was Crash Team Racing. Which is a fun racing game. Uh, kind of symbolic to, obviously, Crash Bandicoot. Uh, by Naughty Dog. Fun little racing game on the PlayStation if you've never played it. A lot of options in this game, a lot of replayability. But the reason why I got this game is to put into something that I got her that I've never seen before. Now, ironically, both the gifts we got for our anniversary, we got from the very same place on the exact same day, different times of the day, because I was off that day. I went out that morning and got her gift. She actually went out the afternoon and got my gift, ironically enough, uh, from the same place. And so this is a trading place. So when someone trade, when someone get, you know, I want to give you, you know, I want to. They don't sell this game. When you bring them the game, they go, okay, this game's worth this. What do you want to trade for it? That's how it works. Now, when I walk in the door, I can buy something, but somebody actually like give, you know, turning in a game for them has to trade for something else of equal value, or agree to something that they both believe is equal value. And when I saw this. I had to get it for her. I've never seen it in the wild. I had to make sure it was real, that it wasn't something somebody just threw a sticker on, because, again, I've never seen one. 
And that, and it's a lot like, oh, let's say uh, my N64 case back there, you see back there, that stores my N64 games. It is a PlayStation 1 case. Now, inside this thing, on this side, in the very front, you can store 12 memory cards. And there's a slot in the front here. I'm not sure if it's for a controller or whether it could fit a double, uh, double disc PlayStation 1 game. But all the rest are individual slots after that. Uh, this is really cool. I think you can fit like 20 games in it or something. Uh, really cool. Uh, I saw this. I had to get it for It was only like $15. And uh, she was really delighted to get this because, again, she loves PlayStation. Loves PlayStation 1. So it's kind of really cool to get that. Really, really excited to get this for her. This is just for her games. My games are not allowed into it. So, talking about our anniversary, I had been talking about how when I go there, they had some really expensive NES games I never played before. And when she went there that day, she did get one for me. It is none other than, was it North and South? A fun little strategy game. Uh, glad I have in the collection. And one of the reasons why I asked for something like, or was talking about something like this, so normally I buy like the cheap NES games, and I've never seen this around in my area ever. So when I saw it, I like mentioned it, and I was glad she picked it up because I was really hoping to get this game. Uh, had fun playing it. Again, it's a fun little strategy game. If you like strategy games, on the NES, and there are not too many on the NES. One of the other games I actually ironically got. It's on the Game Boy Advanced. It's a box copy of Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith. Which is a, like a, an action, like Star Wars game. Use weapon combos, uh, maneuver to beat, of course, you know, like General Grievous and Count Dooku and stuff like that. You know, you got the Force Push, the Saber Throw, the Jedi Mind Trick, stuff like that. Uh, fun little game. So, not my favorite movie in the world, but a fun little game to play, and I'm glad I got it for the Game Boy Advanced. I'm not sure if I ever picked it up, she wouldn't have got it for me. And when I got my wife that actual PlayStation 1 case, I actually picked up a Namco PlayStation 2 Namco Transmissions Volume 2 demo disc. Now, I was looking online, there have been a lot of different versions of this disc out there, so... Uh, I'm glad I get it because finding these demo discs is getting harder and harder. Everybody's collecting them for any system anymore. So it's kind of cool to get this because I just love I love the demo discs. They're a lot of fun to play different games. And the last thing I got is not a video game. I'd gotten a gift card, gift card for Christmas, and I didn't know what to spend it on. And I was at the store the other day. Looking around, I'm, you know, Godzilla's coming out. I'm going to go see the new Godzilla on Tuesday. I can't wait to see it, big Godzilla fan. And I was thinking, you know, I don't own the Gamma Trilogy from the 90s on Blu-ray. I'd really like to get that. And I, and they ha and they had it there, and it was only $10. And so I picked it up, the Gamma Trilogy. If you never watched the Gamma Trilogy, you really should. Guardians of the Universe, Attack of Legion, and Revenge of Iris. This is, quite honestly, the most realistic... Uh, Godzilla, you know, Kaijin monster movie I've ever seen. Honestly. I mean, I like Godzilla Final Wars, but this is the most realistic uh, one. Uh, really fun. Uh, there is a fourth movie that came out after this called Gamera, uh, Gamera Brave, or Gamera 4 Brave, but it really doesn't take place after this. It's not really part of this trilogy. It goes the, That one kind of goes back to being a kiddie movie. I know since new Godzilla came out, or it's announced to come out, that they've announced in Japan that they're making a new Gamera for 2015. Unfortunately, it's not you know, going to be released over here, but uh, I can't wait to see that. But I uh, really love these movies. i never actually seen Attack of Legion, the second movie. I've seen the first and third one, never the second one. And uh, honestly, it's awesome as the other two are. Uh, if you're not, if you're a fan of Godzilla or, or Raiden or any big monster movie, you really, really ought to pick this up. And since it's only, I mean, it's only 10 bucks for three Blu-rays, it's really a, uh, I also love the cover, too, but it's really awesome, awesome trilogy. So, guys, that is my pickups I've had lately. Like always, thanks for watching, and I will talk to you guys later.